You're a guy that's working no matter if you're quarantined or not. What a crazy time for you. I know you were, you know, the free agency frenzy while this was all happening. Um, how's everything for you over there? Everyone's healthy and good and you're getting a little bit of a break. Everyone's healthy and good. And you're right. The NFL just keeps on rolling. And it's almost amazing the feedback we got because all this stuff is happening. And there's all this news and we're breaking news. We're, and people are like, thank you. It's a distraction yeah. from what's going on in the real world, which I wasn't sure if people would look at it a different way, but hey, it's the job that I'm paid to do and I'm gonna continue to do it. And I love being here with you guys to talk about it. Well, Patrick, let's get to let's get to it then because you are always, uh, you know, our first that we go to in terms of news and notes. You have the best information and we wanna know what's happening. And I'm speaking for Aaron here. What's happening with the quarterback situation in New England? Yeah, look, anyone who tells you that they know exactly what's happening is lying because no one in that <laughs> Organization is saying a word. And I can tell you, I know folks there, they're not talking. But I will say this, throughout the season, I would get dispatches almost from, from coaches around the league or source around the league being like, the Patriots guys all seem to really like Stidham right now. And that's when Tom yeah. Brady was the starter. And I would hear that when Garoppolo was there, that they all really like Garoppolo. And then at the combine, it really picked up. And it was like, if Brady leaves, and we're not sure he's leaving, he did leave. Don't be shocked if they go with a Stidham veteran quarterback combination. And that veteran quarterback ended up being Brian Hoyer. I will say this, though. Bill Belichick, A, will never get caught with his pants around his ankles, surprised, and end up a 2-14 and 14 Patriots team because he just didn't know what he had at quarterback. They'll have a plan. And the other thing that has really been picking up some steam in the last couple of weeks since the combine was, don't be shocked if the Patriots make some sort of crazy move. And I don't think it's... Cam Newton or Jameis or even Andy Dalton, they're talking draft. And is it trade up to get Tua, who Saban and Belichick know each other? Maybe. Is it Justin Herbert, who's an academic All-American and a Rose Bowl MVP, who has it upstairs up here that might be something that they really like in New England? Or is it offering who knows what they could even offer to go get Joe Burrow because Stop. he's the number one? Who knows? Really? People, people are saying that don't be shocked if the Patriots – make some huge big swing and of course that's not coming from new england that's from people around the league and one note the team with the third pick in the draft are the detroit lions the general manager bob quinn worked in new england forever the defensive coordinator in new england who's now the head coach of the lions was matt patricia the fourth pick joe judge who just left many years working with bill belichick up there in new england is now the giants head coach usually it's guys who have familiarity who end up making trade partners i can't say any of that's definitely going to happen but if there's conversations, don't be shocked if the three or the four are the spot that the Patriots are talking with. Can are I just fangirl? No, I just want to fangirl out for a second. Uh, what in your mind, it would be Burrow, right? If the Pats made a move to get Burrow, would that be the biggest move that New England could make? Yeah, because in your I, mind? Think, I think everyone will say that Burrow is the number one prospect right now at quarterback. The problem I have with it is I don't know what draft capital it would take to get the number one overall pick. If you're the Dolphins, right. You have three first-round picks. You can go to the Bengals and say, we want Joe Burrow. Here are three first-round picks. They have to listen. Who could the Patriots offer? I mean, at the 23rd overall pick, they have a couple mm -hmm. of veteran players. It would be really difficult to get up to number one. And I think that's where Joe Burrow is going to end up going, number one overall to the Bengals. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about another guy. Obviously, you mentioned him before, Tua, um, his draft stock. And, and where is it right now? We know about his hip. There was a report yesterday about him getting checked out again. Um, by a doctor, and his camp was saying he was fine. But where is his stock right now, Shregs? Okay, Aaron, it's a great question because at the combine a couple of weeks ago, we were all there. The momentum was like a locomotive for to a uh, everyone. He looks healthy. He looks great. He's an amazing in the interviews. In the last few weeks, I'll tell you, I talked to all these teams. It's kind of been at a standstill, and it's almost like all right, because of the situation in the country right now, and because of the lack of ability for these doctors to examine to a, on their own. It's almost like you're really taking a big swing and a leap of faith that this guy's hip is 100% right. And wow. you're, I, I don't know if Tua goes as high as he would have gone before all this stuff had happened in the country. No prospect was maybe hurt more than Tua because everyone wants to see the hip up close. Everyone wants yeah. to see the ankle up close. Everyone wants to do their own medical analysis with their doctors. And because of the current state of the country, they're not going to have that opportunity to. I would say this, Justin Herbert, had a chance to meet with the Dolphins right before all this happened. Tua did not. I wouldn't be shocked if you saw Herbert or Love go even before Tua just because of what a risk that hit might end up being. And these teams like to have 100% sure things physically. 
And then we know that Justin Herbert's in full physical health. And we know that love, at the very least, we know he can take the field and can play next season. Uh, speaking of, you know, the front office or head coaches wanting to know if they have a sure thing, uh, Shregs, the 2017 draft, Ryan Pace moves up in the draft and he takes Miss Mitchell Trubisky, number two overall. Who else was in that draft? Patrick Mahomes and, uh, and Deshaun Watson. Looking at it now, the news comes out today that Ryan Pace is saying there's an open audition between Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky, the guy that he moved up just a couple years ago to take number two overall. And I know it's not an exact science. We get it. But what was your reaction when you heard that today about him saying it's an open competition or are you not surprised? Okay, there's a few factors here, Carissa. First of all, there's something called the fifth year option where these teams have to pick up these guys to ensure that they that they're going to keep them for the fifth year. The, the, we know the Texans are going to pick up their fifth year option on Watson. We know the Chiefs are going to do it with Patrick Mahomes. The Bears haven't done that with Trubisky yet. And you add on this. They're going to pay Nick Foles $20 million this year. That is what his salary is, $20 million. That is not chump change. That is way more than Trubisky. And not only does Matt Nagy have multiple experiences with Nick Foles, with Philadelphia and Kansas City, the offensive uh, coordinator is Bill Lazor. He was with Nick Foles. And also John D. Filippo is the quarterback's coach. He was with Nick Foles when Nick Foles had that miracle run with the Eagles. There are a lot of reasons to believe open competition or not, or whoever gets the first snap, that Nick Foles might very well be the starter for the Chicago Bears. But we're going to see how this thing plays out whenever we get back down to field and see how they play. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Nick Foles and not Mitchell Trubisky when this thing all came to. Yeah, because he's the what starter? Happened, Nick Foles was the backup in uh, in Philly. He was absolutely Nick Foles. Was he won a Super Bowl. We get it. It was a fill in the blank. Um, <laughs> okay, we have a lot of news and notes, and we could go on and on and on. But quickly, yeah. before we let you go, Schrager, to open the blinds, talk us through real quickly the uh, the new NFL playoff structure. All right, so you've got now fourteen teams instead of twelve. You're going to have seven per conference, and only one team gets a buy in that wild card round, which makes this thing way more wide open. It also makes December football, the games that Aaron Andrews is going to be on the sidelines for, way more interesting because there's there's more teams that are going to be there. Um, Interesting, 43% of the teams in both conferences are going to make the playoffs, which makes that also very cool. And and I would say this, wild card Saturday and Sunday, three games apiece, an early game, an afternoon game, and then a night game. I know a lot of people are like, I don't know if we want to mess with that. I, I like football. I like more football. And I love playoff football. I'm all for it. And I can't wait to see how those first few weeks are going to play out in the playoffs when this gets in, put in place. And we like you. Peter Schrager, the consummate professional. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's frozen pizza time, guys. I got to go. <laughs> for the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you.